So intervals can be dissonant or consonant in sound. Our dissonant intervals consist of the major second, the minor second, the augmented fourth, which is also known as the diminished fifth, then our major seventh, as well as our minor seventh. Consonant intervals, we have a major third, we have a minor third, we have a major sixth, we have a minor sixth, then we have a unison, which again on a piano, there's not two of the same note, so I'm just gonna play the one note. Then I have my perfect fourth, perfect fifth, and then my octave, which can also be thought of as a perfect eight. So dissonant is describing the sound of not being very settled. So it's not a stable sound, it's unstable in sound. While our consonant intervals are gonna be describing a sound that is more stable. So this plays out good in music when you have the contradiction of certain sounds that kind of sound stable and certain ones that sound unstable and sometimes the unstable ones then will be stabilized by a stable sound. And this is one of the very foundational things that occurs in music, the relationship between dissonance and consonance. So the unison, the three, the five, and the eight, are the strong consonances. The strong dissonances are the two and the seven. These have a sound that some people describe as needing to be resolved because these intervals by themselves sound very dissonant and when they are resolved, it resolves that dissonant sound to a consonant sound. The perfect fourth is unique because in some scenarios it sounds like a dissonance, but in other scenarios it sounds like a consonance. Usually when there are only two voices creating the perfect fourth, it is a dissonance. 